to follow all the new concepts you just learned about impingement and about the cuff itself. Now this is a very contentious uh, problem and it, you always see this in the clinical scenarios and you're not, want, you're not sure what to do with these patients. So we'll just go through some case scenarios and we'll get, go through some uh, variations of how these uh, partial cuff tears present. So you've, you've already seen this. There has been a slight difference in what we thought was the attachment of the cuff and what we know now is that variations in the cuff attachment. What we need to remember is thickness of attachment of the cuff on the GT is around one centimeter. So when you look at the thickness of the cuff, if you see one millimeter of the footprint exposed, it is equal to 10% of the cuff tear. That is the thickness. We always talk about the thickness of the cuff tear, but we don't talk about the surface area of that defect. That has not been mentioned in many of the papers. Now, what are the types? Bursal sided one, like was mentioned previously in the talk. Um, and this is mostly due to mechanical wear and impingement. Intratendinous ones, which are in the tendon, could be degeneration and tendinopathy, like we get gray hair, even tendons get to degenerate. The difference in the tendon is that in the rotator cuff, the articular side of the cuff is a bit more stiffer than the bursal side of the cuff. So the bursal side of one is more mobile. So this differential movement between the cuff parts gives you this intratendinous lesions. And sometimes inflammation in inflammatory conditions also give you that picture on MRIs. So articular sided tears are due to internal impingement and probably due to instability as well mostly seen on the younger patients. If you look at the grading, it's done arthroscopically. So you cannot grade a partial cuff tear clinically or due to any, with any other investigation. <coughs> so to know the grade of the tear, you need to do an arthroscope. Pathogenesis, there are various factors like intrinsic, extrinsic, traumatic, repeated trauma, especially patients who are into jobs which involve their arm abducted and internal rotated, like hairdressers. Hairdressers are the worst group of patients you can get in your uh, clinical practice because even surgeries on them don't do very well. And people who work at that height in their occupation are somebody you should be very careful about. And if even a single episode of trauma can tip the balance between a tendinopathy to a partial tear. How do they present pain? Pain with weakness or stiffness? So if it is pain, we need to find out what the cause of the pain is. Then you know how to treat them correctly. So if there is a differential pull on the intact tendon, like a bit like the tennis elbow, where you have partial tear of the ECRB, and if there is the intact tendon gets pulled, you get pain. So if you get to stretch that tendon out, you get better. But in the cuff, you can't do that. Uh, pain with stiffness is due to inflammation most of the time. Stiffness, again, is due to synovitis. So if you look at the pattern there, the pain is mostly due to the inflammation. Okay, so to improve range of motion first before you decide on doing anything. Examination, very, very important. Assess the wasting, tender points, and movements are very, very important to check, especially the passive movements.